Mike Farrell, Rivals.com, here with Mario Cristobal from Oregon, who had a historic signing day, second signing day. This is the highest ranked Oregon class in history, number three in the country, up there with the Alabamas and the Ohio States of the world, man. So that's a little pressure now. Now you gotta now you gotta take it to the next level, right? <laughs> Well, it's the right kind of pressure. It's what you want, and it's why you, you come to Oregon to be able to put a product out there like this and attract elite talent and get a chance to develop them and coach them. So we welcome it, and we uh, we greatly anticipate the arrival of all these guys. 13 are, are here already, so the rest will soon join. This is a crazy class. So I, 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 I'm going to start where you, you love life on the offensive line <laughs> with uh, Kingsley, Jonah, Bram and Jackson, tell me about your linemen. Exactly what you want. You got uh, a nice mixed bag of length, power, athleticism, recoverability, balance and body control. Guys that are light footed, but heavy handed. They can anchor, they can slide their feet. They could dig in there and play with a flat back and knock people off the ball. And they're all intense competitors. So it's, uh, it's exactly like you want to draw them up. We went after them. We've been on them for two plus years, and uh, they they formed a bond early in all the competitions. They were able to come, you know hang out with each other. So uh, we're blessed to have them, man. These guys are awesome. And I, I know you love this kid. Um, you know, late edition Byron Cardwell at running back. Um, you guys got a little bit of history in San Diego at running back at Oregon. Just a little bit, you know. We want to continue that, and, and just looking at at last year, this year. And then the following years, and you look at Byron, and he's a guy that, uh, I mean, he, he'd be at the top of your board on uh, on any year. You know, of course, him and Seven McGee, two guys that are just game changers. And Seven has multiple position value, so, yep. um, and he's electric, you know, he's electric. And then you add Byron in there who's who can do it all as well. It's, uh, it's hard to imagine a better backfield for us, especially on the West Coast, having those two guys right in our footprint. And you got the number one tight end in the uh, country, tight end class in the country with two four stars uh, in Terrence and Maliki. What are what 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 do they bring to the table that's different from from each other? Well, they're just they're both very similar. I mean, they're both they're they're, they're naturally basketball players, as well, but they're long, explosive guys, and they could take on you know the C area, knock people back, and, and do a great job in gap schemes and double teams, pin and pulls, man schemes, but. Uh, besides just the intermediate and the short stuff, these guys can stretch the field now. I mean, these guys are long guys that could run. Great body control, uh, great catch radiuses. I mean, their their ball skills are off the charts. You watch these guys and some of the things they did this summer, some of the tournaments they went into and the way they just recklessly threw their body around and came up with big plays. These guys are incredible. Like, I call them jumbo athletes. They're in the 250 range, but they move like they're 215, so... I'm super excited to have these guys. And catch radius is also the theme at wide receiver. Six five, six four, six three. With a lot of juice to go behind it because uh, <laughs> we, need that. we needed a couple of, we like to refer to them as rocket ships, guys outside that can just flat out go, but that have played inside to be able to use, you know, your big slot receiver personnel packages. Uh, but they all, they all have a uh, make you miss ability. Um, they can make you miss and go the distance, home run hitter type guys. But when that ball's in the air, they know how to go get it. They can all create separation, uh, beat man coverage, which is what you want, right? All the, the matchups you get nowadays in college football, the team's trying to bring pressure and play, man. They, these guys are exceptional ball players and they're exceptional human beings too. So they've blended in well so far with the guys on our campus. And the first five-star quarterback ever to commit to Oregon in Ty Thompson. Uh, how quick do you think he's gonna push your other guys? Oh, he's he's my he's, he's my kind of quarterback. He's a guy that after he throws out there for a couple hours, he's gonna jump in the squat rack and put 500 on his back and get deep in the bucket. You know, <laughs> he's, uh, he's the kind of guy that people rally around. Um, elite, elite human being, elite competitor, elite skill set, uh, care factor that's through the roof. So. He fits in, in, a, in a very talented quarterback room, and, and we expect him to, to make a tremendous impact. Now, Avante Dickerson was a late addition to the D-back class, which has Jeffrey Bossa, Dave, Damon David, Jalen Davies, and so on. So D-back, you, you had mentioned to me you want to get taller and longer, uh, and you certainly did. I mean, these guys are all, you know, Dickerson's probably the, the shortest arm one. 
Yeah, we, uh, you know, it's it's at premium, right? These giant right wide receivers that, you know, go up and make these, you know, these nine stops and these, um, you know, these controlled hitches and and some of these just one on one matchups and jump balls. So we want to get more physical and longer there, uh, being that we lost four guys or losing four or five guys to the draft this year. So we want to get guys that we feel could come in and develop quickly and get on the field. These guys all play with tremendous courage. They, um, they're hard hitters. They're physical. Uh, they attack their processes, really intelligent process really well. So we feel comfortable in them learning our packages going in there and uh, not flinching, not flinching when we walk into some of the stadiums we have to walk in, into and make some big plays. And you got a four-star linebacker in Keith Brown and a well-known name in Jonathan Flo. But you tell me that Brandon Buckner is downhill killer <laughs> he sure is i mean i uh he made just about every all-star team imaginable and because he earned it and he earned it at the line of scrimmage another guy with multiple position value like that uh has come off the ball in a three-point stance on the edge has jumped inside has gotten off the ball um and so he's gonna play all over the place and when you look at keith brown he by far the best player in state big physical guy he's a wrestler as well so he knows how to use his hands. He understands leverage and he's been a duck fan his whole life. So to get him on board early and have him lead the charge for this recruiting class was huge. So to tell the, the lay person the, you know, the recruiting fan, but more of a college football fan, how, how insane is it to think that Oregon is number three in the country, given your geography and the fact that you're right up there with Alabama and Ohio state. I mean, this is nuts to me. Uh, USC number three, yeah, because they got Southern California, but Oregon's never done this before. How? Well, I think it hit me when I first visited out here in seventeen and made the decision to join the staff as um, a co-coordinator and an offensive line coach. I, I had never seen a place that was as committed from a resource standpoint to the student athlete. I mean, everything from uh, your, your nutritional support, your academic support, your facility, where you sleep, how you train, on the strength coaches, and the caliber and uh, the, how elite the staff was that surrounded each player, the, the developmental staff, which is so important. The way that you could set up structurally the entire building and the people in it, and uh, just felt that if people just come out and see it, they'll see there's a tremendous gap between what we do and what a lot of the schools, most of the schools in the country do. And, uh, and we don't, we're, we're proud of it, but we're very humble about it. We're very uh, appreciative of it. We just want to maximize its visibility so that more people could see it and realize if I'm really serious about my academics, if I'm really serious about football and being a great football player and having a great experience, Oregon's got to be at the top of my list. What's the coolest thing out there uh, uh, facility wise that people don't know about that they should make a sort of a destination visit to once we can get back to visits coolest thing in the facility i mean you got these cryo chambers you got infinity pool saunas <laughs> like what, what's the coolest thing that, that kids should really come out there and see i think they need to come out and see practice so they can experience and <laughs> get a and look at the culture Such yeah coach. no you got to see it man because i mean call it what it is i mean I'm in, right and like i don't I, I don't look very cool in all the cool Nike stuff that everybody else looks cool. And I, I mean, this is, I have my solid colored shirt and I have my, you know, my normal Nike shoes. And, and so I don't, you know, I'm not into all the, the flashy stuff. I'm, I'm into the, you know, the blue collar stuff. And I think that's what really, I think that's what surprises people in terms of really neat stuff facility wise. I mean, it's pick it. I mean, if you walk through the place, you'll see why it's, it's been voted year in and year out the top facility in the country. And there's one guy in one position that I didn't mention, and, and I think he could be an absolute freak. It's Keanu Williams, defensive end from Clovis. Tell me about him. Well, he I, I stopped by his school in January, um, you know, a couple months leading up to the pandemic. And uh, the coach had pointed, out, pointed him out from far away, walking down the hallway. And I was like, whoa, wait a second. That's the guy that we saw on film that was – jumping around like a dancing bear. I mean, this guy was impressive, explosive, athletic, look long. And then when you when you saw him, hey, it was you know, pretty good distance, but you could tell he was big. He was in the 6'5 range. Um, humble guy, hardworking guy, so athletic. 
and the few workouts we've had out here, he has been incredibly impressive. He is going to be an absolute monster, uh, not only in this, in, you know, in the landscape out here, but, uh, you know, nationally, he's a really, really good football player. I've heard some Eric Armstead comparison. That would, that's the kind of people you want to be compared to. Yeah, you know? do. Is, is he that big? Oh, he's, yeah, he's that big. <laughs> wow. He's that big. All right. So we talked about, you know, you want to build an SEC roster in the Pac-12. You've won two Pac-12 titles now. You got this great recruiting class coming in. Obviously, the next goal is the playoff. Is there one area that you want to focus on in 2022 positionally or geographically that you think it would take you to the next level? Well, I think we have to continue um, strengthening ourselves in our footprint out on the West Coast. I think this year was it was critical that we sign um, the best players in, in certain areas. And we did, you know, the number one player in what, Nevada, Oregon, um, Utah, Arizona, Colorado, they all came to us. The best offensive player in California came our way. The best player outside of the footprint in um, Mississippi and in New York and in Nebraska came our way. Um, so we want to strengthen our footprint over here. And when we go east, you know, we want to continue to just increase our length and our explosiveness. We're going to have probably a significant amount of early entries of the NFL draft on the edges. You know, um, it's, it's so critical to finish off this class the right way with explosive players. Um, but yeah, we're looking at guys that can fill in the roles for the guys that we feel are going to be, you know, early departures for the NFL. The trenches always, I mean, I'm going to end up saying every position because the way that we're layered, we're layered to graduate yeah. to have 24 departures for the next two years and it's evenly spread out through all positions so it's going to be a typical you know class of anywhere from 22 to 25. Yeah you got three already and as you've told me already I'm killing your 2022 class so we'll uh we'll see how they how they progress throughout I hope we can get out and see kids I mean that would be nice so I think that's a big deal got the Oregon helmet in the back there representing and Mario Cristobal setting history in the Pac-12 and at Oregon with the best recruiting class ever. The fans got to be psyched about that. So I appreciate your time, and uh, we'll see you in 2022. I appreciate you, Mike. Appreciate all the work you're doing. Have a good one, man. Go Ducks. Thanks. Appreciate it.